The group breakup. I would have loved to do a group breakup if I had the opportunity. It sounds amazing. Just sit there emotionlessly be like, you and you? Not happening. Dear Shandy. Welcome back to another Dear Shandy Bachelor Recap listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? Oh. Yeah. Fine. So-so. <laughs> okay, so-so. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's been a rough few weeks yeah. for us, yeah. to be frank. Uh, I don't know if we ever knew coming to Florida just how bad it would be here. Well, not that not if not a Florida thing. No, I mean it may be a Florida. It thing. may be a Florida. I think thing. Florida is actually getting revenge on me for uh, mocking couple of, it. A couple of disses I made on Florida. Yeah, well, I mean, you're you're basically one giant walking diss on Florida. <laughs> well, let's not get extreme. <laughs> I was, I just made a couple of light ribs yeah. and now I'm getting assaulted by the yeah. state of Florida. Yeah. This has been a rough few weeks for us, but I think for anyone recapping as well, because this has been eight hours of The Bachelor. Eight hours. Yeah. Do we think it was worth it? It's always worth it. <laughs> okay. So let's quickly get to housekeeping before we jump the gun and start recapping. We just want to quickly address the fact that the next Bachelorette season, ooh, Lots to talk about mm. there. Won't start until July 11th, meaning we will be recapless for around four months. Recapless. Recapless. Re re nice. <laughs> you win. <laughs> so we want to hear from you guys. We've gotten countless requests over the last nine months. Can you believe that? We've been recapping for nine months, more or less straight. Sure. That's that, crazy. I mean, that's, 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 we now will have a recap baby. <laughs> <laughs> And it was a rough pregnancy. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, ba we barely made it. Yeah. So, Recapless for around four months. And that's where you guys come in. We've gotten requests for everything from Survivor to Love is Blind 2. But I know Love is Blind 2 is now over. I think Temptation Island is still going on. Basically, let us know if you wanted us to recap something else, what that thing would be. Yeah. And we're really going to go with strength and numbers here if we do choose to pick up something else, because frankly, it's a lot of work to do these. And so if only a small percentage of you are going to tune in, we're probably not going to do it. It has to be yeah. like a majority thing. What I would almost say is this, the way we should do it is we should ask them, name stuff that you would like us to recap. Yeah. And then we'll see like hundreds of hopefully hundreds of responses. Yeah. And then we'll curate those to find out what the top four are. Then we'll do a multiple choice. On Instagram. Round. On Instagram as a poll. And so if you're not following us on Instagram already, at Dear Shandy, that is where polls tend to take place. And we really do use those to make oh, yeah. decisions with this podcast. So mm -hmm. comment below and let us know if there's something. Okay, anything else housekeeping wise? This being our last recap for quite some time. I learned a lot about armadillos. <laughs> yeah. Apparently there are a lot of armadillos here. Yeah. But I have not seen one. Yeah. <laughs> but I haven't looked that hard. We did see some ducks with some babies. It was very yes, cute. Yes, we saw baby goslings. I don't know if it was a duck. Wait, what kind of animal they were, was that? They were goslings. Well, no, goslings are goose, geese. They were duck-ish babies. I want to ask- Chicks? What's a baby duck? A, a, a baby duck. Duckling. Yeah. Duh. Huh. Duh. Okay. <laughs> Whew. Okay, this is going to be a long recap if we get caught okay. up on duck. But, but before we get started, I just want to quick. Um, there is a bird here in Florida, in Miami, that looks like a duck and a vulture got it on and it had some kind of d disturbing looking animal. But it's cute in a weird way, but it looks mostly like a duck, but a little like a vulture. And I want to know what that animal is. So yeah. if anyone knows what it is, please tell me. Okay. So I think we can move on from housekeeping. Yeah. Overall thoughts on episode 11 slash 12 slash the finale in two parts. <sighs> Do you want to even bother? No, I don't want to okay. overall thought this. Okay, we're not overall thoughting. No. Okay, we're just going to get going. Finale part one, of course, opens with Jesse saying that this will be the most controversial finale in Bachelor history. Andy, do you think it was, in retrospect now, the most dramatic or I controversial? Was, I honestly don't see where the controversy was. Controversy <laughs> usually involves strong, differing opinions yeah. about an event. Yeah. I think this is more the most disappointing ending of a yes. Bachelor season ever. I completely... Which is why I feel like the whole buildup okay. to this, you know, I, I know the trope of them always saying it's the most dramatic ending. 
that's become a joke. Yeah. But this was really, they were like, no, this isn't a joke. This yeah. is really the most insane. And it wasn't. It, all it was was disappointing. It was just sad. I agree with you. It wasn't particularly controversial because I think no one is really going to disagree about the things that were upsetting about no. this finale. And it also was actually what most finales should probably be. It actually may be the most predictable and crappy <laughs> Finale. Jesse keeps saying that nothing can compare to what you're about to see tonight. The rose ceremony is from <laughs> hell. And Imagine you- living a life, a whole life. You live born and you die at like a nice old age and nothing can compare to what happened in this episode in your life. What kind of life have you lived? Well, and also I think their ratings would be a hell of a lot better. Yeah, this that's, is true. That's a good burn. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> So we pick up in Reykjavik, uh, where Clayton sits alone in the pews of a church while a somber chorus sings. What is this? Like, like, were there a bunch of like people who wanted to pray and listen to this chorus outside? And they're like, no, 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 we got a bachelor thing going on. What like, was funny is it there? was clearly meant to be depressing B-roll, like him reflecting and being yeah. all sad. But it was also clearly a private performance for him only, which would be weird for him to look sad during. They, they should have just had him sitting in that room and it was like dun in that dun, room. dun 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 yeah <laughs> take two they should have had him sitting in that church and all you heard was dun 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 very nice mm. I liked your diminuendo I think it's Chopin mm. that's anyway. amazing sorry it's it's amazing what they used to compose I know they compose a guy from like hundreds of years ago composed something that's like, you don't even think of it as music. It's like, or it's like came from the earth. Yeah. It's like part of life. Yeah. And it's still people like seven year olds sing that, that as a joke. That's how I feel about the opera that I'm in right now. There's oh, this yeah. piece like da, 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 da. Not done in mobile. Yeah. 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 Good job. yeah. yeah but yeah. it's amazing when the intro comes in, the whole audience is like, like everyone knows it. It yeah. can be that iconic. You that think like, timeless. You think like in like 300 years, like someone will be like singing like a two chains hook. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, how did he write this? It's so incredible. <laughs> okay. We have to keep moving. This is going to be a long ass recap yeah, yeah, we if we get caught no, up on no things like that. Here. <laughs> Okay. So in Reykjavik, uh, Clayton talks with Jesse. He says his trust was shattered. Uh, he's still upset about Susie, obviously. He reiterates that multiple times. Susie said to explore the relationships fully. Jesse asks what he's questioning. Clayton says he has no trust. His walls are all back up, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and now we have the rose ceremony from hell. No. AKA, I wrote the longest rose ceremony ever because this took up almost half of this episode, it felt mm-hmm. like. Yeah. Heading into it, Rachel's nervous. Her biggest fear is that he's falling in love with someone else. How convenient. (laughs) And then, of course, we see them standing being like, where's Susie? So Clayton arrives. He says Susie's not there. And then he explains the whole situation to them and reveals that he was in love with both of them Mm -hmm. and was intimate with both of them. Mm. And Andy, you said, you get a car. You get a car. (laughs) They all get a bit of everything. Mm. The ladies are both fighting back tears here. And Clayton asks if they have any questions. He'll be transparent. He respects any decisions they choose to make. Hmm. I, I look. I think we've been pretty fair towards Clayton. Oh yeah, all season long. Oh, yeah. So I don't feel bad going as hard on Clayton as I think I might end up going in this recap. Yeah. If I'm honest. Yeah. But you know the transparency thing. I if you're not going to actually be transparent, then maybe not preach and like advertise how transparent you plan on being yeah yeah transparency is not a thing you should say hey look at me being it's, transparent it's, yeah yeah how transparent i am you have to just be transparent exactly yeah. and the other thing is he respects any decisions they choose to make does he end up respecting gabby's decision here no no he doesn't no so it's sort of like why are you saying these things i if don't you think, don't actually i don't them? think clayton has the And this is not a a diss on Clayton because 90% of people would be in this position, but I don't think he has the emotional or like just interpersonal tools to deal with this. (laughs) Interpersonal tools. (laughs) I'm like, it's like an interview. I'm like, Clayton, we like you, (laughs) but I don't think you have what it takes to be a a Bartley and Bartley. um, Associate? Attorney. (laughs) Yeah, associate, right. I don't think he can handle this. I, I see him like his brain is like, this whole double episode is like that scene from the Titanic where you go down below deck to like the machinery room. Yeah. But it's like all these like 
the steam spurting out and like <laughs> fires and water spraying and cogs like breaking apart and guys getting like burned. So he's that's, pretending to be the dining hall with classical music playing yeah, and exactly. everything being all orderly, yes, but it's really that. that. Was, that's where I was going. Okay. Yeah, everything up top. It's like, oh, classical music. Yeah, yeah, everyone's yeah, like, having oh, a nice hors d'oeuvre. I'm so sorry. I take full responsibility. Yeah. I, I'm sh- I will be transparent with yeah, you. Yeah, meanwhile, guys are literally dying <laughs> down below. They're drowning. They're burning. The whole place is going to hell. And that's what's happening in his brain. And I, and I respect that. That's a human, he's yes. a human being. Yes, but I also feel like what I'm really lacking from Clayton, I think throughout this whole finale, and I don't want to get ahead of myself because I do like to go in some degree of chronological order. There's two things. One is foresight. It's just seeing how his actions will look two steps later. Mm -hmm. And the other one is empathy. And of course that came up a lot. So I don't need to, I think, advertise the the empathy thing. But for me, the foresight is, is as bad as the empathy, just because in this case, he got himself in the situation where he lost Susie because of his lack of foresight. Right. And so why then are you going to convince someone who wants to leave to stay? I think that there's to give Clayton the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I, I really, I feel bad for him. As much as I think he did a lot of things wrong. Yeah, because, okay, yes, I agree. Because, of course, he's put in a position where he is encouraged to make these mistakes, but as not, we said. Not to eat just his, encouraged to, eat to make cake, these, to have his to, cake. Yeah, and he, he's encouraged. He's, he's de- it's demanded of him yes. to eat his cake and have it too. <laughs> to have his cake and eat it too. It doesn't matter. I guess mm-hmm. you can eat and have. Yeah. But he, I believe, the lead in this, particularly in the final stretches of this show, feels invincible. They're just like, I can do whatever I want. I can tell everyone I love them. I can have sex with everybody. I'm I'm God here. Mm. I, I think it's it's just And I do cute- think he's been fed that narrative yes. as well. Yes. Yeah, so you he can was, get away with this. He was probably thinking, like, production has told me to say, tell them how I feel. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, I'll just tell them all I love them. Because I kind of do love them. Yeah. He's like, I I said it because I felt it. Yeah. And I but believe then the foresight. Him. The foresight. I'm he sorry. Was, there was no foresight. Because yeah. he felt like God. He was just like, I can do whatever I want. And in the end, I'm just going to pick whoever I want. And they're going to be so psyched that I picked them and everything's going to go smoothly. But what he didn't realize is that they're humans mm-hmm. and he's human and they're, everybody's a human. <laughs> and that's a problem. Everybody's a human. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> Is that the point you wanted Did to Did I make, make my point? Did I land that or is it kind just of. meandering? Okay, okay. I'll, we'll put a pin in what I want us to discuss, but I just want to get okay. us caught up there. Okay, so the both ladies excuse themselves to go cry. Andy, you said here come the stairs crying scenes. Yeah, we've been waiting all season for oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Their cries seem to conveniently echo throughout the space. Yes. <laughs> Clayton looks like he feels awful and the consensus with the ladies is, is what we have even special? Clayton looks like he's going to throw up. And he sits on the stairs and waits. Now, Gabby arrives first and says that her encouraging him to explore other relationships was not meant to suggest that he should love other women or tell them that he loves them. She asks how he weighs saying I love you with potentially sending her home. And his reply is, I mean everything I say. It's not really answering her Mm. question. And she asks how he backs up his words. And he says... Because ultimately, who I pick, I love the most. <laughs> nah. Nah. I, I mean, and then, of course, in her ITM, she's like, wrong fucking answer. I mean, Gabby's just so great in this whole finale. To be fair to, to, to Clayton, again, heavy is the head that wears the crown. It's easy easier for Gabby to, to oh. point fingers at the guy who's making all the mistakes than it is for Clayton to handle this situation. Absolutely. But still wrong, but... <laughs> much more difficult. He's a CEO. Don't ever want to be a CEO. It's not, it's not as good as you think. No, I mean, I agree with you. I think we're sort of torn between feeling compassion for his position and also how, you know, as, as we've said from the beginning, he was clearly cast for his malleability, mm-hmm. his inexperience. I almost feel like the way he sees his role as Bachelor is almost old school. Like it goes mm-hmm. back to a different time when Obviously, you would sleep with all three women. Yeah. You might not tell all of them that you love them, but it's sort of like you're the one in charge. You're well, picking someone at the end, and it's it's not really on you to feel so bad about no. it. No, and it's also not a, a possibility that whoever you pick is not going to accept it. 
Yeah. It's just like you just pick. It's like you're at the store. Like if, if I go to a grocery <laughs> store and, and pick a certain type of egg and go to the cash register, they're not going to be like, no, 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 we don't. You don't get that egg. You get the shittier egg. I love that egg is the thing you chose. For There's this. so many types of eggs now. You got a cage free. You got an antibiotic <laughs> free. You got a regular shitty egg. All I'm saying organic. is that if you go to the grocery store and like if you were looking for a food at the grocery store to use as an example of there being variety, I'm not sure eggs are really the best. Do you be surprised? Go to the egg section. You're going to be amazed how many different types of eggs there are. There's big eggs. There's brown eggs. There's, there's white eggs. Egg. There's organic <laughs> eggs. There's antibiotic. There's cage free. There's cage free antibiotic. There's cage free organic. There's medium. Small. Does anyone ever get anything but large or extra large eggs? I, I don't respect someone who gets. Why would you want less than a large egg? You know what I've just realized this is that there's no such thing as a small egg. No. It's just regular, large, and extra large. Yeah. It's like it's like uh, Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. Tall. Yeah. I'll, there's no there's When no you're small. like, I'll get a small, and they're like, tall? And yeah. you're like, yes, <laughs> tall. <laughs> okay. We'll keep moving here. This is going to take a while. Yeah, this is not good. She asks why he wouldn't just save the L word. Eh. I think that's fair. I mean, it's totally fair. And he says, because I felt it. It's real feelings. And I she says, him, but also, you know. yeah, I, yeah. She says, which is great if I'm at the end, but what if I'm not? Like, how would you feel in my position? She really implores him to empathize and put himself in her shoes. And that sort of becomes the theme, I think, throughout this whole finale. He, this isn't something he really seems to do. And I do think that could be attributed somewhat to the foresight, maybe. Yeah. Like he doesn't really realize the hurt he will cause, which I don't know. Which one is it? Is it foresight or is it empathy or lack of both? I don't think that Clayton lacks empathy. I think he's a deer in headlights. Like he doesn't, he thought he was in total control. And yeah. now he's realizing that his actions have repercussions that he didn't think would happen in a not real situation. Like I think he thinks he's in fantasy world, which he is kind of. He is, yeah. I guess for me... And this is, I don't know, we're like, I'm obviously a very different person. I can't imagine making people feel this terrible and, and not feeling worse about it than he seemed to. I agree. <laughs> and I, agree. I don't know and how I, else to word that. I There's agree. And I have theories about that. Okay. But we'll talk about that later. Okay. Are you, will you remember? It's my main theory. Oh, your main. Okay. Yeah. Your thesis. Is, I had a thesis, thesis last week. So do you have yeah, a thesis? Yeah, I have this a week? thesis. Okay. Andy, you said, I feel like he's the executioner and the people being put to death are upset he's killing them. What's he supposed to do? Yeah. So we I, agreed that all of a sudden everyone does seem to be upset with the format of this show. I'm not giving Clayton yeah. some pass. He's the executioner. Yeah. And, and it's not. He, it's his job to kill. Mm -hmm. That's all he does. That's his job. He doesn't choose it. Actually, you know what? I have an issue with that analogy. But that's used a lot, the executioner analogy. Okay. But it's like you're in a small town and like you need a job. Yeah. Like, and you're like, yeah, I went to the gas station, went to the grocery store, you know, the post office. Like, is really the executioner the only job you can get? I know. Oh, so you think the executioner kind of gets off on killing people? Yeah. No, I think that, yeah, I don't, I used to feel like, oh, the executioner, someone's got to do the job. But really, do you really have to take that job? Is that your only option? I like mean, you can't take any other job. I'm going to go out there and say that I think executioners might be kind of not great people. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so does that go against your no, no, defense no? The analogy of stands, but as I break it down on a meta level, I, I am now saying that I don't believe you're a great person if you choose to be an executioner. Okay, yeah, it's sort of like, what do you mean? I'm just my yeah, job. I, I, I'm just I had doing no my job. job. Yeah, I had to make money. Yeah, but yeah. Now, I there's to other feed ways. my family. Yeah, you can sell lemonade. <laughs> um. Okay, so do are you then defending Clayton or not in this moment? I'm both. I okay. am both. All right, he that's is an annoying absolutely, take. definitely wrong yes. about the way he went about this. But he's in a si situation mm -hmm. where he's not making what I believe would be the choices he would make in real life. I agree with that. So we agree in general that this is an extreme case of hate the game, not the player. Mm -hmm, but definitely. I do also think that if you love someone, you'll do everything in your power not to hurt them. And so either he didn't actually love these women, no. or like I said, he just has no foresight, which is 
that this level of a lack of foresight is almost just as bad as not loving them and telling them that you, anyway. I think you were seeing someone whose relationship slightly immature. Yeah. Basically working out all their developmental problems on live television. Yeah. And it's not fair to him because like, believe me, when I was 26, 27, I went through, like, I was a, I did not know what I was doing. Yeah. And I was like Clayton. Yep. And, and it's easy to poke fingers. Totally. Or fingers. <laughs> or no fingers. You mean point fingers? Point. Th th <laughs> no, poke. Poke. Are we on Facebook yeah, now? Poking him. <laughs> Remember poking? Ugh. What was that? Was that flirting? What was poking? It was nothing. It was annoying. <laughs> like every time I got a poke, I was like, do I have to do something about this? Like, How do you respond? Do you, do you like smile? You poke back? God, the social media is so stupid. It's so dumb. Anyway, um, yeah. So I both think he's wrong. Yes. And I feel bad for him. Okay. So Rachel arrives now. She says she's in a lot of pain. She says their last week no longer feels special. She cries a lot over the course of this finale oh, and wow. here. Yeah. He says the love he feels for them is totally different and not the same. And she says she felt like she was waiting to hear it from him for so long. And then to hear that he had said it to two others mm. took away its specialness. Yeah. And then she breaks down again. I feel so bad for her. Yeah. I mean, Sucks. all season long, we really, I saw it. And it was. It was. It was. And we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Okay. So we'll get, yeah, yeah. you don't forget. Don't no, forget. I'm, I, it's so my she, whole thing. She says she's so in love with him. She can't fathom how he could feel that for others. And he says it's not over unless she wants it to be. He loves her and what they have is worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. His favorite line. Yeah. She says she's really scared and she doesn't know if she can handle it. He says his family is there. He wants her to meet them. He asks her to take it day by day. She nods in agreement and they hug goodbye. And then we see more of Rachel sobbing. And Andy, you said it's crying porn. It is. Is that a thing? It is now. Yeah. Well, Andy, we may be trying. <laughs> uh. Did I give you too many props for this ad, Andy? There's a lot happening over here. <laughs> a lot of cereal business. So obviously we are here right now to talk about Magic Spoon, but I think the proof is in the pudding. We don't travel without having a box of Magic Spoon delivered to our Airbnb. That's true. That's pretty crazy, actually. Yeah, excuse me. I want to have some. Yeah, I know. Do I look like I'm faking liking this? <laughs> so while you show the Shandies how cute the boxes are, I'm going to read some stats. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Only 140 calories a serving. Oh, and by the way, I, I didn't even realize this. What? But there's like old school games on the back of the cereal. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> that was a good move. Nice. Did, look at this. It reminds me so much. That's so nostalgic. Childhood. Yeah. It's also keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, and low carb. And you can also build your own box, which is what I did when we got this delivery. Mm. And some of the flavors are cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. And I got to say, those times where it's late at night and you want to have a snack, you're hungry. Oh, it's and good you stuff. And you have a sweet tooth but you don't want to feel terrible. It's like the guilt-free, nostalgic, and satisfying. It's all the things. It's it's like um, perpetual motion. Do you know, you know about perpetual motion? No. It's impossible. They've tried to create perpetual motion for, for generations. Oh. Where something moves forever without energy being added to it. Yeah. This is achieving perpetual motion of cereal. <laughs> So go to magicspoon.com slash Shandy to build your own custom bundle of cereal. And don't forget to use our promo code Shandy at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund you your money. No questions asked. So remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash Shandy. And use that code Shandy to save $5 off off your order and we thank magic spoon for sponsoring the podcast so we're going to take a moment now andy to talk about a clothing brand that i'm a big fan of i am a huge fan of fairity i love that they are family owned family run mm -hmm. incredibly high quality and it really is just the most timeless aesthetic. So I was first introduced to Faraday when you dragged me to the store. I think it was on Bleecker Street. I think so yeah <laughs> and i was just like oh this is all timeless classic stuff yep 
It's yeah. all. That, that, it's very it, you, actually. It's, like, it's the ultimate in your aesthetic. It's high quality, so you don't need to repurchase it because you hate repurchasing something yeah. that you already have a version of. And I don't blame you, but if something falls apart because it's poorly made, then that's what happens. And I love that it's a family run business. They care about quality to the point where, get this, they have a lifetime quality guarantee, meaning if at any point, in the lifetime of this item that you own, there is something wrong. They will either repair it or replace it for free. That, what other clothing brand on the planet that does that? That's insane. It's Are they insane. just counting on people just forgetting about that? <laughs> like that's a, that's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that is confidence. Yeah, like I'm like 95 years old. I'm like, you know, this, this, there's a hole. this shirt. I, there's a moth bit a hole in my shirt. I want my money back. And I sadly didn't bring some of my fairy stuff on this trip because the stuff I own by fairy tends to be more fall, winter, and we're in Miami. Yeah, but I yeah, love yeah. my cream cord overalls, which you guys have seen me wear on this podcast. What I love is really they're separates. There are pieces that you can wear in different outfits. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, I can only wear this this one way. You can really just mix and match. It's just great. They have the best stuff. So head to FaradayBrand.com. And use code Shandy at checkout to save 20% off all your new spring staples. That's code Shandy at Faraday, F-A-H-E-R-T-Y brand.com for 20% off. Okay. So now rose ceremony mm -hmm. again, take two. I find it hilarious that the powers that be still made them go through a rose ceremony. Yeah. I mean, they were loving every minute. Is this necessary? Of it. They were they were during this, I'm telling you, regardless of what it looks like afterwards, production was giddy over this. Giddy. Oh, regardless of what it looks like, I don't even think they're pretending they weren't. Oh, it was uh, they were they were dying. They were, they were very just like, "Oh my this. god, this is finally we've finally arrived at the promised land." This yeah. is it. I would go so far as to say that maybe they had another location planned for this rose ceremony and when they knew what was going on with Susie and what he was planning on telling these ladies, they made sure to get a more echoey space. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we need to find the best space in Iceland for really amplifying crying. <laughs> yeah. You got anything like that? Yeah. Rose ceremony take two, Clayton emphasizes they can choose to decline the rose if they can't accept it. And he thanks them for talking through everything with him. He gives the first rose to Rachel. Mm -hmm. And then the second, of oh, she accepts, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And then to Gabby, she says, I can't. Mm. I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you want to walk me out? <laughs> She's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Rachel looks floored by this information. She is literally floored. <laughs> yeah. She's put to the floor. And Gabby, so so they, she goes off, he walks her out, and she says that she wants to level with him. They do have something special, but her trust in him is what got her this far. And she says, I'm not in the business of competing for love. Uh, <laughs> are you not? I, <laughs> are you not in literally yeah. the business? I agree with everything Gabby says, but this was a pretty funny line on, yeah. on a show like The Bachelor. Yeah. She says love can't be measured. And did he think once what it would feel like to be in her shoes? He apologizes, says, is her heart telling her to walk out the door or does she want to give it one more chance? <laughs> Andy, you said, do you want to leave now or in a week? <laughs> she says she can't do this again. And Andy, you said, oh, it's going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> and Clayton says he doesn't know what tomorrow will bring, but this is real and they both found love and that's what they came for. I really wish he hadn't done this, mm -hmm. yeah. especially since he's like, you don't have to accept the rose. Yeah. You know, this is, this is about, this is the moment of it being a two way street, him respecting their decisions. And he goes out of his way to change her mind. I guess he just felt like he had a contractual obligation to make the show keep going. Okay. Mm, okay, so I think now is the time to talk about what we want to talk about. Okay, now is the time? Yeah, I mean... Okay. I mean, there could be any time, but I think now is <laughs> fine. Now is as good a time as any. This is what I think. I think that Clayton truly was going to pick Rachel. It was a close call, but he was going to pick Rachel. But he's the type of guy who, when a woman that he is fond of, very fond... Yes walks out the door, that's the one he wants. Which is a very, very, very common trait. It's so, not only is it common, but it's almost pervasive amongst men who are not of an age where they've been through that thing before. Yes. Which he is, and I was there, believe me, I've chased after things, which in hindsight, I was like, what was I thinking? Yeah. 
There were better options. Yes. But I chased because they left. Yeah. He's like a cat with a a, a, a toy that, you know, with the thing, whatever, <laughs> the cat toys where you pull the thing. Yeah. A cat doesn't chase unless the thing's pulling away from it. That's it won't. True. If you just leave it on the floor, the cat will look at it, it'll start licking itself and, mm -hmm. you know, doing all sorts of stuff that has nothing to do with the thing. But if that thing starts pulling away, oh, yeah. Suddenly, he's pouncing. It's way more shiny. And I feel I'm going to I'm going to take a flyer on this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm very confident mm -hmm. that the reason that Clayton became obsessed with Susie yeah. was because she left and left with prejudice. It was a cold like goodbye. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, I'm crying so much mm -hmm. and I'm torn, but I just can't do it. And mm -hmm. it's emotional. It was like an emotionless. Remember, Susie left like kind of like. Peace. Yeah, he was upset with how not upset she seemed. He couldn't handle that. Yeah. And I still believe that Rachel was going to win when well, Susie took over with her absence. So I'm torn. I, it's almost disturbing because I felt so convinced by their connection, like the way he looked at her, the way he spoke to her. And I understand that the lead is contractually obligated to lead everyone on. We have to remember that. He's, of course, no saint, but yeah. it's really, he has to do this mm -hmm. to some degree. But it's like to do it to this degree where everyone bought it. Yeah. And to the point where when later on in part two of this finale, she's like, are you really putting me in this car? Like she could not even. She was as incredulous as we were. Yeah. She couldn't even believe what was happening. It made no like, sense. Like that level of deception feels almost well, it's artificial because he has a weakness and his weakness is he can't let women who he cares about walk out the door. Well, I strongly believe it. Well, and we've said before on this podcast that you have friends who have gotten married. Yeah, a couple. From that situation. I almost got married myself in that situation. Yeah, there you go. It happens all the time. Yeah. It cannot be underestimated. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. We can pretend it doesn't exist, but it totally does. You're right. And I Susie's feel like the type of girl who that can do that to a guy. <laughs> yes. Like Susie's no slouch yeah, in all the departments. Totally. She's the exactly the girl. Yes, where that you're can like, oh this. my God, suddenly now that I can't have her, you're like, wait a minute. She's a once in a lifetime kind of girl. Yeah. It's like you're like going about your regular life, eating all the foods you want, and one day someone's like, You can't have pizza or ice cream anymore. Yeah. All you think about every minute of every day is pizza and ice cream yes yeah i agree yeah. we will talk about this more as we keep going but for now uh they come back to the rose ceremony rachel is crying on the floor <laughs> there's a lot of floor crying there is gabby returns and the girls hug and check if the other is okay they're I very this nice very i mean they're cute, cute. The friendship here is very yes cute. very cute and now we have rose ceremony take three Clayton mm. offers gabby the rose and she accepts and he apologizes again says he hates putting them through this pain there comes a point where that this apology, he hates the pain he's causing, to me, becomes diluted over time. Mm -hmm. And look, I have not been anti-Clayton this season. No. So I'm hopefully still not my criticism, I think I'm a little more anti-Clayton than you, just based on how I'm this anti went what in. Clayton did. I'm not anti-Clayton. There's a difference. He's human. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right. He's not a monster. Yeah, I would actually. Think I would? I think I'd get along with Clayton really well. I agree. Yeah. It's not like I'm like he's the devil. No. He made bad decisions. He made terrible decisions. Yeah. Okay. So he says he's really excited to introduce them to his family, and then he says, "I don't feel right." Cheersing, and Gabby <laughs> toasts then to trusting themselves enough to be there this far. And Andy, you said that's the saddest drinking of champagne ever. It's they were a, like, a, "More da da yeah, da." Yeah, it's da, like the bubbles da, are going da, down da, da, instead da, of up. <laughs> It's like mm. <laughs> moving on to Reykjavik again. Clayton is with his family members in their great Airbnb. Airbnb, 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 Airbnb. <laughs> Airbnb. It's funny because when he, when the brother first said this, I was like, "Yeah, why are you saying that? Why are you saying that?" And then when he said it the second, it's just a nice time. place you're staying at. Why are you saying Airbnb? <laughs> yes. Clayton arrives and tells them he's scared and he's just had the hardest week of his life. But it's great to be in that nice Airbnb. It is nice. Yeah. It was a nice Airbnb. It was a great Airbnb. Airbnb, Airbnb, Airbnb. He insists he refused to fall in love with more than one woman, 
But in fact, he has fallen in love with three and he tells them about the Susie situation. His father, who I think becomes the MVP of this entire oh, yeah. finale. Well, you know what's great about his father is is his father gives real opinions. He puts himself yes. on the line. Most most parents are like kind of deers in headlight, deers in headlights or deer in headlights. They are deer. Deers in a headlight. But isn't plural deer deer? They're deers in a headlight. No, they're oh, deer. Oh, they're deer in a headlight. Yeah, You're right. Yeah, they're you can deer also say in headlights. Can you say deer? Because otherwise you're suggesting that there are multiple deer in the face of <laughs> well, one headlight. Well, they are. They're a family of deer in one headlight. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Like his mother took a softer approach and could sort of see all angles while the dad mm. was like, you screwed up, man. Yeah. He's really <laughs> taking risks. I like it. Yeah. He's like, you know, I'm on TV once in my life. I'm like, it's not like I'm getting a spin off of this. I'm going to make the I most mean, of he it. Might I'm going to tell, I'm going to speak my mind. I like yeah, it. Yeah. He was fantastic. Yeah. He said, you have to understand they don't want to be second or third. And his mom says it'll be weird talking to Gabby knowing she's some consolation prize. And Clayton shouts, she's not a consolation prize. <laughs> she's third. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll keep going. <laughs> so Gabby arrives. She's in much better spirits today. She does a sweet toast, thanking them for being so warm. Gabby chats with her mom. Her mom asks what made Gabby decide to stay. And Andy, you whispered, Instagram. <laughs> and she says she's never met anyone as genuine and open hearted as Clayton. Blah, 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 blah. Moving on, Gabby chats with his dad. He says he respects the fact that she left. He could tell she has a great sense of humor. And all in all, everyone says it was so nice meeting each other. And in general, I thought this felt very rushed. Yeah. And maybe it was because that rose ceremony took almost an hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Gabby and Clayton chat outside. They kiss farewell. And in her ITM, she says she thinks she made the right decision in staying. Yep, she definitely did. (laughs) Definitely. Okay, and now Rachel arrives. She says in her voiceovers that she's hurt, but she also seems in decent spirits. She says the place is beautiful. And the Great brothers, Airbnb. He, well, yeah, he says, yeah, my parents found it on Airbnb. It's amazing. Did he just get, were they like, which, which guy's advertising Airbnb here? And the brother's like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I can do that. Yeah. It's like, you don't have to say anything. Just, just He didn't do a bad job. He didn't do a bad job. You know what? They went too far. And I feel like brands always do this. Yeah. It w- You know, when he just said, oh yeah, this great Airbnb, we were like, but we weren't sure. No, he should have made a joke about it. You always should make a joke. No, but I'm just reminded of those times when I will advertise something on Instagram or something. Yeah. Or even on this podcast. And we want to advertise it in a way that is authentic to us because that's, it's based on our experience with it. And the brand's like, but you have to say this. What's so interesting is that brands, I don't think know how to advertise their own brand better than the common person. No, they don't. I don't want to. I feel less inclined to use Airbnb because I was so shamelessly advertised to me yes. in this subtle, like, oh no, it's in so organic. In an intelligence insulting no. fashion. He should have been like, oh, by the way, we're advertising Airbnb and Airbnb rocks. Yes. That should have been like a break. Totally. Yeah. Yes. Or just the in passing, oh, our great Airbnb. Not, oh, my parents booked it on Airbnb. It's just it's so, so terrible. cheesy. Yes. I don't want, I'm never doing Airbnb again. It's over. <laughs> Airbnb, Airbnb. After this Airbnb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never stay anywhere but Airbnb. Ever, <laughs> ever. Okay, so now Rachel chats with his mom. She says their relationship deserves seeing things through. And her mom says, his mom, sorry, says that it spoke volumes that Rachel wasn't going to leave mm-hmm. when things got tough. Yeah, sure. Rachel chats with his dad and says that Clayton has always listened to and truly seen her, blah, blah, blah. They all hug goodbye, and the two of them chat outside, kiss goodbye. Once again, it feels very rushed. Mm-hmm. And I also am finding it alarming, just, I, just, I really saw a connection between them, but it really feels like since Susie left, Clayton is phoning it in. That's it? It's over? I always felt he was phoning it in with Gabby, but with Rachel, this is really that one moment in time where you see them together and it just doesn't have the same, it's, he's distracted. It's so amazing how, and I've been here before, so I know. It's so amazing how your emotional um, uh, barometer or wind, what is that wind, thing? It's a, is, is this a, what is it? I know what you're talking about, but I don't. scale, wind. I know what you're talking about, barometer isn't the word, but like the, I know what you mean. Your little compassy thing. 
Yeah, the thing the that little, goes... The little pointy thing. The thing that, yeah, points at numbers and goes left to right. Yes, that. Yeah. <laughs> what about the it? The problem is I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> but I do know of several names of the thing that we're talking about. Yes. Um, no, but I think that he his, his emotional um, momentum changed so drastically because mm-hmm. of what happened that he... It was like she wasn't even there. It was like she was a two-star Airbnb and Susie's a four-star Airbnb. Uh-huh. You can't go back to the two-star Airbnb. It's over. <laughs> There's still Airbnbs. Airbnb. Where else are you going to stay? <laughs> and so you think that he perceives Rachel as a two-star Airbnb simply because he can no longer have the other Airbnb and it's perceived as a four-star Airbnb, even though... Yeah, basically, they're both just he was staying. They're a, both three star Airbnbs. No, he was staying what he what he felt like was a four star Airbnb, but it actually was a two star. But then a four star Airbnb, which had been like eight hundred dollars a night, suddenly dropped to two hundred dollars a night. <laughs> and he was like, "I'm staying in a three hundred dollar two star Airbnb when I could have a two hundred dollar four star Airbnb." What am I doing? Yeah, but you're making it sound like Rachel's actually a lesser Airbnb. No, I said that Rachel. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is getting complicated. <laughs> Rachel is a very good Airbnb. Yeah. <laughs> very good. You're very happy. He yeah. was happy. He had everything he needed. He had yeah. an in-suite uh, bathroom, yeah. en-suite, sorry, <laughs> and a, a kitchen. It was beautiful. Yeah. Nice flooring. Mm-hmm. Good air control. Free parking. Yeah. HVAC, parking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Carbon and, monoxide yeah. monitor. <laughs> Carbon monoxide. He had olive oil, salt, pepper, <laughs> spatula, pans. Everything was there. Yeah. But... Then something opened up that he was like, oh, I can't have that because it's it's too, it's out of my price range. It's too nice. Mm-hmm. And then it just dropped. It dropped out real cheap. And he's like, how could, oh my God, I got to get that. Wait, it dropped because she left? I, I have to, I have to, <laughs> once in a while, I get too deep into an analogy <laughs> okay. and I'm going to bail on this one. Okay. We'll just leave that one. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. I lost my way. That's fine with me. <laughs> I'm A-okay yeah. with leaving that one behind. <laughs> Okay, so now after both ladies have had their meet and greets with his parents, we now hear Clayton's voiceover where he says, when Susie left, my world got flipped upside down. Yeah, don't forget what he's saying there. Take those words for what they're worth. Yes. No, you're right. Yeah, it got flipped upside down. What's upside down? That means that everything that once was this is now the opposite. Mm. And it was when she left. That's it. It's not when he got to know her or whatever. Nope. Okay, the family discusses and agrees that he has to love one more than the other. Mm -hmm. And Clayton arrives and says he's conflicted. And his dad's like, why? What's conflicting? (laughs) I love his dad. Good man, good man. He says he's getting clarity and his heart is with Susie. And it was a little bit more special there. Eh. I personally don't think it's a great sign when it requires someone leaving to come to that conclusion. Always. We it's never a good sign. Chalk that up to never that. Never a good sign. Emotion. If this is what, this is a general rule and this is like a more Q&A discussion yeah. than a recap, but yeah. I will say this, as, as a man who has experienced many mm-hmm. things in this department, if you are feeling fine about someone, like you're like, fine, it's nice. Mm-hmm. And they leave and you suddenly feel like this is, this I screwed up. This mm-hmm. is the one. It's not. You were right the first time. Yep. I agree. Okay. You need to want it bad while you have it. That's right. You trust your intuitions. You are you. There's no other you. There's not a crowd of people who's like, no, you're wrong. Your feelings are wrong. We agree that you're wrong because we think this is good. You're the one who decides mm-hmm. based on your feelings. Yeah. And if you felt, eh, and suddenly you feel amazing when someone's gone, you're wrong. Period. His dad says he's grasping at straws and she made the choice to walk. But Clayton says he thinks he could still get through to her. And his dad says, when someone walks away from you, they're walking away from you. You're too caught up in the one that got away. Thank you. Nailed it. That's it. That should be the the, the catchphrase for the whole episode. Yeah. Clayton says, Susie had everything. She was a once in a lifetime kind of woman. And his mother says, then why did you screw that up? (laughs) It's so nice when someone's own parents are saying what you're thinking. And look, I, like we said last week, I actually don't think it's the end of the world that he had sex with multiple women in this setting where he's encouraged to do so. Again, he was encouraged to have his cake and to eat it too. People can say he wasn't or he could have resisted. Absolutely, he could have resisted, but he was. 
convinced to do that, encouraged to do that. Encouraged and also possibly to, to, to give him the benefit of the doubt, he possibly was conflicted about his feelings about these people. And he wanted to have that last puzzle piece. See, like, well, if the sex is great, oh, then maybe I, it's a go. Yeah. Then it gets back to him being like, oh, it was a little bit more special with Susie. There comes a point where you need to make a decision. What's also interesting is Susie's the only one he didn't sleep with. <gasps> That's a great point. And of course, we always have to remember this was all strategically and diabolically planned by producers. Do we think it's a coincidence that no. Susie's overnight was last? Of course not, especially since they very likely knew how she felt about this. I, I think that he had heard a lot about pizza. He had seen other people eating pizza <laughs> and he never got to taste pizza. Oh, that makes it even worse. That's an even worse trait. There's two things I feel about Clayton. One is that he loves the one who got away. But mm -hmm. I also think, and and look, I know he's going to grow to a, I think Clayton's going to be a great adult man. Yes. Very soon. I he's agree. He's like three or four years away. Yeah. He is very physically driven, I think. Yeah. And, and that's not uncommon. No. And he's also a very physical specimen. So it's like, that's what he knows. I'm mm -hmm. sure he's been physically pursued as well. Mm-hmm. So he was just like, I didn't have, I didn't have sex with Susie. I need to, ha I need that. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> you say this like you have felt this way before in your life. <laughs> I will neither confirm nor deny. Okay. That but that is a male mindset then. Yes. It's like you become obsessed. Obsessed. You cannot, everything else becomes meaningless. You're just like, I need to have this. Yeah. And he is a man of conquest. His Viking victory in episode whatever it was is, is not to be underestimated. Uh -huh. He's a Viking. He yeah. wants to conquer and physically take ah. his women. And the fact that he couldn't have Susie is killing him. It makes her all the shinier. Yep. Clayton says he knows what his heart is telling him to do. So now Jesse arrives and he's like, guess what, everyone? Susie's still in Iceland. She's dun, like, dun, dun, dun. You, like you cut to like her. She's like in shackles in a dungeon. <laughs> she's like, I want to go home. Okay. And now we're back in the present time. Jesse interviews a few more bachelor alums. I did like, I mean, Caitlin can do no wrong in my yeah. eyes, but you know, everyone had something good to say, but I sure. really liked how Caitlin was like, Clayton suffers from something I also suffer from, which is being in the moment a little too much. Go. She really has the ability to come at this from a place of empathy and relating. Vulnerability. Yes. And I just think it's very easy to sort of, like we said, poke that finger. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the Michelin man. Oh, no, no, not the Michelin man. Yeah, the, that's uh, the Pillsbury, the Pillsbury Doughboy. Doughboy. Yeah. He loves getting poked. <laughs> Wait, what does he do? He goes, Ooh. Ooh. He loves getting poked. <laughs> that's a nice life he has. <laughs> Yeah, because he does look very pokeable, actually. What are you going to do other than poke him? Are you going to have a conversation with him about, like, like geopolitical issues? <laughs> anyway, I just like how instead of just merely skewering Clayton, she was like, look, I know what he's going through. I've been there, but he does have this problem. Caitlin a is a, very human. She She's is. She's very willing to expose her, her frailties. Yeah, Exactly. And I, it goes a lot further for me than just being like, he did this wrong, this wrong, this no, wrong, this wrong. It's so easy to judge. I know. So easy. So now finally we're on to part two. Oh, wow. Is that sooner we than you expected? It. Yeah, it's right on time. Jesse once again emphasizes that this is the most controversial finale. And of course we see Aaron and Genevieve sitting next to each other yeah. in the audience. Is that, is that, it was like, ooh. Is I mean, that, that was so chatter? clearly a ploy. Yeah. Like someone was in charge of that. Yeah. By the way, the seating's not random. I wasn't sold on that. I don't <laughs> care. I refuse to care. There was no chemistry because he was next to He was never. Was, has James. there ever been chemistry with Aaron and anybody? No, because he, no. He hasn't made eye contact, literally has not made eye contact since he was ever on the show. <laughs> not one time. With anyone but James. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know. He's too busy being like, so what was it about me that you yeah. liked and made you want to ask me on that date? <laughs> Okay, so we're back in Reykjavik, and we start off with some amazing shots of Iceland. And Andy, you said, I want to go to Iceland. I did say that. Yeah, with that voice and everything. And an stay in an Airbnb. Airbnb and Clayton Airbnb, says, Airbnb, Airbnb. what'd you say? Airbnb. What? <laughs> 
And Clayton's heard saying, you don't know what you have until it's gone. And that's what Uh, happened. Again, he's telling us. He is. He's just telling us. But I really, you know, maybe this is something that you learn from living and he's just young. Right? That's what's going on here. I learned everything I went for that I thought that I didn't have until it was gone. Yeah. Is that right? (laughs) I don't know. I got lost somewhere there. You know what I'm talking about. I was wrong. Every time I went for something, I was like, oh, I didn't know I had it till it was gone. Yeah. It, I didn't have, I did ever should have had it and it was, should have been gone. Yeah. You were meant to lose it. It it's was a, a very lesson. important lesson, by the yes. way. In, in case anyone's still in, in under, I don't know, 30, 36 for a man, 30 under for a 30 woman. For, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't go for things that go away that you didn't really need before. They're there. Just let them go. Let, let them go. No, it's so true. Yeah. Because actually, when I think about that happening to me too, that's happened really once that I can really think like I was like, ugh, about it. It made me want him more. Yeah. It was so wrong. So wrong. Like it was actually a gift that it ended when it did. And I had too much pride to pursue it further. Yeah. But what if I hadn't had too much pride? Think about how how much much more of Wasted energy, time, life, like damage. Yeah. So thank God for pride. That's pride, what I'm saying. Pride, yeah. <laughs> pride is good. Is good. It, it Sometimes. can be good. Sometimes. Okay, so Jesse visits Susie now. Jesse tells her that Clayton misses her and asks her to visit him. Mm. And we have a cliffhanger. And now Clayton is with his parents once again in their... Airbnb, Airbnb, Airbnb. <laughs> when his mom asks, why Susie? Well, what is it about her that stands out from the rest that makes her the one? Clayton says on their first one-on-one, he learned how adventurous she is, how much fun she is, and how appreciative she is. And once again, he said, she's a once-in-a-lifetime kind of girl. You know what I'm going to have to say about this? Nah, Do you know I, what I'm going to say? I, I would like to hear what you're going to say. I have a feeling I know what you're going to say. There's no specificity. None. There's none. She's adventurous because what? Like you took her on a helicopter ride and she didn't say no. She's a very... She's Fun. She's a very pretty girl. No, and here's the thing. Who I had think- a decent personality who said bye. That's what she is. Here's the thing. I think Susie is great. And I, you know, if she had become Bachelorette, I absolutely would have eaten up her season. I'm, I have nothing bad to say about Susie. My point is that for him to be like, no, her, it's her. You would think that he would have more of a list of why. Other than she's adventurous because we went on this date once, she's fun and she's appreciative. The same adjective he's used for both of the other dates, that she's appreciative. Okay. She's appreciative. That's not why you marry someone. She's unattainable. We know what he's saying. She's unattainable. His dad says, I think it's slim to none that she'll be here. Uh, this guy <laughs> he is on me point. Up. This guy's on <laughs> well, point. I love him. And then Susie abruptly arrives as if on cue. Yeah, but that's not fair to him. Because no. in real life, she wouldn't have ever been there. No, and if anything, they're waiting for him to say something like that so yeah, that they, they could totally, send her yeah, in. Yeah, this is a dick move. <laughs> the guy's on point. Everything he says is right. And then they're like, oh, really? Well, look at this. We've been, they're literally, there's a guy behind Susie with like an AK-47. <laughs> like, all right, step in the door now. Susie abruptly arrives, greets his parents, and then asks, Asks to speak with him outside. She says it's been a rough few days and she had accepted everything and she's shocked she's even there right now. She says she couldn't believe how he turned on her mm-hmm. yeah. at their last exchange. She says if he has love for her as a person, how could he treat her like that? He made her feel wrong and bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, we I think we covered this last yeah. week. I'm kind of, I don't want to talk about that yeah. anymore. <laughs> The horse is dead. Yeah. He says he's so sorry and he didn't mean what he said. He says he knows the love is there and asks if there's any way she can give him a second chance. She says she can't make that decision right now. (laughs) I have to milk that a little bit. Sorry. It's a business decision. Understand, please. (laughs) But it meant a lot that he was so genuine in his words. And he says he expects nothing right now. He just wanted her to know where he stood. Mm. She gets in the car and drives off and we see Clayton shed tears alone here. And these are legit tears. Yeah, he's upset. He is upset. I know where he is. I, I don't envy the place he is emotionally. I've been there. It's not fun. It's the feeling of regret combined with loss. And also being wrong. Yeah, it's all not the knowing, like not being in control of the boat. The boat's driving itself. You're not in control anymore. It's a feeling of helplessness, lack of control, regret, 
remorse, sadness, longing, anxiety. It's a bad place. Yeah. but and, I, and it's a place that everyone needs to learn how to get past. Yes. But I also think regret is a really key emotion here because, yeah, she could have just got up and left at some point. Yeah. But I think that the pain and turmoil you feel subsequently is doubled when that person says they left because of something you did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then Either, you, then, it, you know, because it just reinforces your, your self-blame. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it and you also feel this sense of, but wait, I'm not that person. I can do this differently. Mm -hmm. It's not just like she didn't see it. You know, if she at the exact same week, the exact same date was like, I've had a lovely time, but honestly, I just can't picture myself getting engaged to you. And yeah. she left. Yeah. He would be a little less haunted. Yep, I really yep, believe yep, that. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Okay, so Clayton journals now. Andy, you said he's writing nothing. <laughs> the quick brown fox jumps <laughs> over the... <laughs> the lazy dog. Oh, nice. I've downloaded you. many a font in my day. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very good font collection. <laughs> you, you really are good with fonts. I do love me some fonts. I mean, if you ever need a font, like you're, you're debating about a font, just ask Charlene. She's good. You know who's even better than me is my sister, Andrea. Oh, your sister, is just, she's like ridiculous. For our wedding stationery, there was a font I wanted. And all I had was a photo, like just a photo of like a few letters. Yeah. And she found it. Your sister is scares me. <laughs> Her aesthetic scares me. Yeah. Because yours is insane. Yeah, but, but she's your sister even... is, all, it's concerning. <laughs> okay. So Clayton says, because his heart is with Susie, it means he has to end things with Rachel and Gabby. A little late, I think. Yeah, it's about pizza and ice cream. You can't eat, what is it, good eating, like pasta and like cereal? Which one's pasta and which one's cereal? <laughs> Gabby's cereal and and, uh, and Rachel's pasta. What made you think that they are those things? Because you generally hunger for pasta a little more than cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Usually. He says he feels bad because mere days ago he was convincing the women to stay. Mm. And I think he's correct to feel bad about that. Yep. Rachel and Gabby are now seen discussing the fact that, yeah, they both met his family, but no, neither of them had dates since. Mm, yeah. And now Clayton arrives, takes a deep breath at their door, knocks, and who boy, I was not envious of what he had to do here. No. He enters and says he did what he thought was right and best, and he's caused so much pain and wishes he could take it all back. And they're like, where is this going? <laughs> Two for one breakup. <laughs> he says he saw a future with them both and meant it, but everyone deserves someone to give them 100% of their heart, and his heart is no longer there. It's with Susie. This, this two for one breakup. Two for one. What was he thinking? I'll tell you what he was thinking. He was so determined to get Susie back that breaking up with a person wasn't even a big deal because he could break up with two people at the same time and do it quickly. That's the way you are when you're that driven to find the one who got away. Okay, so it's funny you say that because later on, Andy, you said... I know the place Clayton's in right now. He's not actually that sad about either of them. It's amazing how fast you lose feelings for someone you thought you had feelings for when there's something else you really want that you're chasing. It's like a light switch. It's no different than like if you're at some sort of like, you know, buffet thing where there's like, you know, waiter service <laughs> and they keep bringing you foods. Yeah. And you're sitting there with a delightful pizza and an ice cream and the guy comes by with like a pasta and cereal uh -huh. and you're like, no, no, I'm good. That's it. This is what's happening. <laughs> he doesn't want pasta or cereal anymore. And by the way, pasta and cereal, when the moment's right, oh, are amazing. Yeah. Maybe the best thing in the world. Yeah. But A good cereal when you're, when you're craving. In, but oh. when you're sitting in front of pizza and ice cream, it doesn't matter. Stuff that you just want the waiter to leave you alone yeah. with. I don't want it. Don't ask me. Yeah. No, you're I'm done. <laughs> Eating my pizza and ice cream. Charlene, yeah? I was noticing how radiant your skin has been looking recently. Why, thank you, husband. I have apostrophe to thank for mm -hmm. my very diligent skincare routine. Mm -hmm. In case you guys are new around here, apostrophe is a prescription skincare company where you basically go and fill out an online form with your concerns with your skin and also some photos. And then a real board certified dermatologist will review your information. That's pretty cool. 
Yeah. It's also cool not to have to go somewhere yeah, to do yeah. this. We live in a day and age where it's all about just not having to go places. Yeah, I want to not move <laughs> yeah. to do everything I need to do. Yeah, exactly. I want to be as sedentary as possible while still getting prescription skincare. And it's pretty incredible. You get it delivered to your door in a matter of days. And anyone who's been watching this podcast for a while knows that I am a big proponent of prescription tretinoin. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it would work for everyone, but it was really a game changer for my skin. And so, yeah, I love that I don't need to go to the dermatologist anymore to get a prescription for it. And you're pretty ruthless about the brands that you choose for your skin. I am actually, I, you know, I mean, you're putting it on your face and if I don't like a product, I don't just repurchase it just out of laziness. I'm always on the hunt for the yes. next best thing. So. And as a result, you have very good skins. <laughs> so we have a special deal for our audience. Save $15 off your first visit with an apostrophe provider when you go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and use code Shandy. This offer is only available to our listeners. To get started, go to apostrophe.com slash Shandy and click begin visit. Then use our code Shandy at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only five dollars five a dollar nothing that's crazy a bus ride a bus ride round trip bus ride. <laughs> that's a-p-o-s-t-r-o-p-h-e dot com slash shandy and use that code shandy to get your dermatologist crafted treatment plan for only five dollars and we thank apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast andy do you think it is possible in today's day to have a business or a podcast, or really anything, and not have a website. I don't think it's possible to be a human without a website. <laughs> we you don't have a, a website, what are you? You're just, <laughs> you're just like, like a pile of flesh. <laughs> <laughs> just existing, floating yeah. around. And what better place to get a beautiful website put together than at Squarespace? It's the best. It's it the is. best that I've seen. It is. And you, you're you pretty tech savvy. You've done a lot of experimenting. It's yes. the best that you've seen as well. Oh, there's no comparison to any other platform I've ever used. And I have dabbled. I'm not going to say the name of the competitor, but there is a competitor and there's simply no comparison. I also have dabbled with said competitor <laughs> and... I agree. So in case you are new around here, Squarespace is a magnificent platform for building gorgeous websites. They have all the templates you could possibly desire. So whether you have an e-commerce site or a blog, they just really have everything you could possibly need in terms of building a website with little to no skill, by the way. No skill. Yeah. And what I love too is that the templates really are beautiful. It's not like Oh, these are my options. Okay, yeah. I guess I'll go with this one. It's in fact what I have found, and I have several websites on Squarespace. My singing site is on Squarespace. My blog is singing on Squarespace. Singing site's very nice, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Thanks. really nice. Well, I'm I impressed. have Squarespace to thank. Yeah. But when I am building a new site and I'm working on the Dear Shandy site right now, I actually struggle because I'm like, oh, I like four templates. I don't know which one to choose. They know what they're doing. They do. And then when you get to the point where you are building that site, let's say it's e-commerce, they help you with the checkout process, with analytics, email campaigns, SEO tools, mm -hmm. which is always, I need help oh, with I that. Oh, I like a good SEO tool. <laughs> yeah. And appointment scheduling. 360. It's 360. All the circle. That's right. So head over to squarespace.com slash Shandy for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code Shandy to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. 10% off something you were going to do anyway. Oh yeah, get anyway. it's free money. Yeah, free money. So again, that's squarespace.com slash Shandy and use code Shandy to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So Gabby says she has nothing to say. She says it's too late. He could have put himself in her shoes. And she says, that's it for me and leaves. And we see the audience seem to cheer at yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he approaches Gabby's room. She says she doesn't know him at all. And she's upset because she spent the last two days away from her friends and family who, quote, actually give a shit about me. Mm -hmm. Great line. Yeah. She says he had a problem with her leaving on her terms, but had no problem sending her home on his. I completely agree with this. Completely. Gabby is so good in the heat of the moment. Oh, my God. She's a smart lady. She is super smart. And you mentioned at one point, you said, notice how the dits switch that she has oh. switched off didn't An see anything she was so articulate down Ar yes it was no, very satisfying yeah. uh, that's why i'm saying the dits is a little bit of an affect oh yeah yeah absolutely and 
she hates that he addressed them as a group more mm-hmm. than once to yeah. tell them what happened with Susie and also to end things here. Yeah, it's a group deal. And he says he gets it, asks to walk her out, and she grimaces and says, no. <laughs> nice. That's <laughs> so great. I mean, that's a you go girl moment. Yeah. It's good stuff. The one thing I really want to hover on here is her saying that he had a problem with her leaving on her terms. That's a, that's a big problem. Yeah. You know, not letting someone leave, convincing them to stay, give me another chance. Clayton needs to be in control. He needs to be the one to determine who leaves and who stays. Mm -hmm. And not just on this show, in life. And he can't hide from that. He can't be like, oh, this is just a show. I was just on the show. But so I give him a lot of leeway because of the show. We've given him more leeway than a lot of people. But he showed his true colors in life. And I'm not, it doesn't make him a bad person. It makes him a very normal, flawed person is that he cannot let someone go on their own volition. He has to be the one saying, you go, you stay. Mm -hmm. And that he has to get over. And I also think he probably has a hard time letting someone go even when it's on his terms. Yeah. He likes everyone to be in the room. Yeah. He he doesn't want people to leave. He wants to have everyone in his his sphere. I can picture him in real life having stayed possibly in a relationship longer than maybe he needed to because he was dragging his feet and ending it. Yeah. And just wasn't sure if he would regret ending it and therefore didn't end it. I think this show has been a great learning experience for him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, so now we have after the final rose, Gabby arrives, hugs her grandpa, who is teary-eyed yeah, with pride. Good, I like him. And she sits in the hot seat. She says, it's been up and down, but watching the last few weeks has given her some clarity, seeing the other sides of the story. Jesse asks if she was in love with Clayton, and she says she was. She has no regrets, and this has helped her learn a lot. Jesse asks, are you ready to see Clayton? She says, I am. And he says, have you thought about what you want to say to him? I have. <laughs> <laughs> She's so likable. So Clayton arrives now and Gabby says, after watching it all back, the first thing that comes to mind is having felt misled. Mm -hmm. She says that he had all the info, yet she didn't. And particularly when she was debating whether or not to leave, he says she deserves to feel that way. And all he can do is apologize and promises he had no malicious intent. She says she doesn't think he's malicious, that she felt he had pit the women against one another, reinforcing a competitive atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Do you agree with this? I, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't in her shoes. I can't really speak to that. No, I don't agree. I don't totally That's not agree. his intention. And again, like, I, I think Clayton did plenty wrong. So I'm well, not defending yeah. him here. It's just that if anyone reinforced a competitive atmosphere, it was the powers that be. Production. Yes. Yeah. Like he, Absolutely. I just want to, I just don't want to skewer him for every single thing when I don't think he necessarily did that himself. We'll never know. Like yeah. we'll never know for sure who Clayton really wanted. Who yeah. Clayton, because in the end, in like episode six, he would have been like, can I just go home with Rachel? I'm done with this shit. Like we don't yeah, know well, that. But it also you could argue though that that was our perception having watched a certain edit that was made to make us think that he was picking Rachel. Yes, this is true. This is very true. <laughs> so we'll never really know. We will never know. But there was somebody that Clayton would have been willing to end the game for. Mm-hmm. A few episodes ago, but we'll never know. We'll never know. She says that he secretly felt the strongest for Susie while telling them all to fight for their relationships. This Mm -hmm. is absolutely true. I think this is messed up. Unless, again... His, what's sad is his only defense is that he didn't know yet that he felt the strongest for Susie, which only reinforces the idea that he did decide to feel strongest for Susie after she left. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, did I have my voice crack? <laughs> <clears throat> yep. <laughs> She takes issue with him using the L word. She says, when you say you love someone, you're assuming responsibility to protect them, to care for them, to not to hurt them. And you did not do any of those things. Accurate? Yes. She says he's not malicious, but he doesn't understand the weight of his words. You did not yes. watch Peter's season, but this is very reminiscent of Peter's mm-hmm. season. And mm-hmm. guess what else Peter did on his season? What's that? He told more than one woman that he loved them. Ah. And do we think that just happened? Nope. <laughs> Correcting. Thank you. She keeps bringing up his having loved Susie the most and not revealing that. I do think that the, the, his biggest crime really was convincing them to stay if he had even an inkling that Susie was it for him mm-hmm. after she had left. Yeah. I'm reminded of a recent Q&A where we gave two types of advice and the, the person who wrote the email, her handle was secretive wife. 
Oh, yeah. And we gave two types of advice. One was the gold star advice, like the conscience cleansing, like, oh, you're, you know, you're doing everything right advice. And then the realistic advice. Yeah. I think it's a little holier than thou to be like Clayton should have told all the women when he when he was trying to convince them to stay that he loved Susie the most. Yes. It's a little unrealistic. It is. I like, yeah, you could say that's the right thing to do, but the wrong thing is already taking place, which is him convincing them to stay. I think it's let, let's uh, take baby steps here. It's a little much to be like, oh, you should have also told them that he loves them less. It's absurd. Anyway, I just think it's a very human thing for him to have omitted that information. I'm not saying it's right, he, but I think it's a little like you're you're on your high horse and acting like you never make mistakes to to hold him to that of all look, the things. The guy made this is I'll, I'll make an analogy. It's very a trope of an analogy. Okay, but he invested a lot of money into a stock that proceeded to go straight down to the shitter. Okay, and what did he do? He kept putting more money into it because he's like, I've made this investment and I'm going to ride it to the end with Gabby and Rachel. He made his decision. He's like, I said, I love you. And that's, it's over. Like I'm, I have to commit to that. I am towing that line now. Yeah. I bought the farm. I've got to raise the animals and feed them. It like doesn't it, matter what he, why he said it. He yeah. said it and yeah. therefore he has to own it and he has to nurture it. Yeah. He's, he's in a, he's screwed. Yeah. He's in a position of no win. Yeah. I do think it was rich, though, that he was preaching transparency. Of course. Yeah, but look, the guy the, is, again, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, he's human. He's a human being, and he's flawed. Okay, so in after the final rose, he apologizes profusely, and that's that. In general, very reminiscent of Peter and Hannah Ann at After the Final Rose. You don't mm. know what I'm talking about, yeah. but it's, it was very similar. Mm. Okay, so the show resumes now. Clayton sits down with Rachel. She talks about how much their love meant to her. And then after what he put them through at the rose ceremony, and she was the only one who chose to stay, he had still told her to fight for their relationship. Meanwhile, she's been the only one fighting for them every mm. single day. And she says she couldn't even imagine a scenario where it wasn't her. I've got to agree with her. I agree, 100%. I she's right. She said what we think. Yeah. And you know, what's funny if I think back on evidence that made me think, Hmm, like there were a couple things that gave me pause, but they were only from a structural standpoint. They weren't a connection thing. So for example, something that gave me pause was the fact that Susie got the princess date mm -hmm. because historically the winner gets that date because right. it is such a valuable date. You know, if, if you were The Bachelor and I was one of your contestants and you knew that the person getting the state was going to get bags upon bags upon bags of amazing yeah. free oh, clothes, you're the winner. you would yeah. give me that date because oh, yeah. you like me the best. And you would. Yeah. Be, so True. when she got that date, I was like, ooh, why didn't Rachel get that date? Interesting, yeah. And also, I do think that there have been little things, in, especially in the credits, but little moments that were very flattering with Gabby, like funny moments, the kind of thing that they do for a bachelorette to mm -hmm. be that they were not doing for Susie. So things like that were causing me to think, okay, well, maybe Gabby's better. But then what does that mean about Susie? You yeah, know, so yeah, it's yeah. all this little like calculations. However, from a connection standpoint, as in time spent together as a couple, to me, there has been no contest. No, I agree. I don't know what else to say about that. I, the, the horse now has flies buzzing around it. It's been beaten. <laughs> I'll drop it. Death. Okay. Okay. I'll drop it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it should be beaten, but it's dead. She says that he's going to watch this back and regret sending her home. He says he did fight for her and he really did feel all the feelings and everything they shared was real, blah, blah, blah. I don't really know if that's helpful for him to say. Nah, he's just, he's just sort because of, it ends he's up, drowning. He's doing the doggy bag. Yeah, because he's apologizing, but he's also defending himself. And it's kind of like, well, was it it's real the, though? The Titanic is sinking. Everyone in the machine room is now <laughs> passed. Outside the car, she says, you're go really going to put me in that car right now? I found her disbelief here absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah. That's when you deceive too much. Yeah. We, while well, we see Rachel crying, we see uh, the camera zoom in on her father in the live audience of After the Final Rose. He's not looking very happy. Mm -mm. And Andy, you said, Hulk smash. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a Pokemon. Not like Hulk? Hold on a second. <laughs> Was that a more Hulk? Do you know what Hulk sounds like? You don't no. know what Hulk sounds like? I don't. <laughs> okay. You sound sort of like that. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so now Rachel's in the hot seat. She's crying as she watches this back. She says the hardest part of all was knowing how hard she fought for their relationship and getting such disrespect. For example, not even getting her own breakup. I mean, that really is a good gripe. It's... Yeah. uh, so you got the, the, group, I think the, the group plan. The two best gripes to be had here. And, and again, you could argue he should have told them that he loves Susie the most. I think that's a little unrealistic. The two biggest ones for me are him convincing them to stay, especially Gabby when she wanted to leave. Yeah. Yep. And yep. the other one was not even giving them the respect of individual breakups. Mm-hmm. She says she was so blindsided, blah, blah, blah. And he doesn't deserve to speak with her, but he's been selfish this whole journey and she deserves the moment to speak up for herself. Clayton arrives now. Rachel says that his journey for love was the most selfish journey and he had no empathy for her or Gabby. And he apologizes, says he should have checked in with her more, not made assumptions, blah, blah, blah. He apologizes again and she says she just doesn't believe him. Mm -hmm. I think that's warranted. She's right. Yeah. Because there comes a point where it's like... He doesn't believe him. Yeah. I don't think he believes it either. No, he's lost. I just feel like he went into this knowing that he would be falling on his sword over and over yeah. and over again to the point where even his apologies, even if they were sincere, they didn't have the emotion behind them to make None. them seem that sincere. It's like he was just tired. I've been there. I know yes. what he went through. The group breakup. I would have loved to do a group breakup <laughs> if I had the opportunity. It sounds amazing. Just sit there emotionlessly be like, you and you? Not happening. Are you good? Okay. I got to get some pizza and ice cream. <laughs> that I've never tasted yeah, before, but I hear is great. I've been great. disallowed from for my whole life. Rachel says he can't be trusted because at the rose ceremony he had preached transparency when he already knew who he loved the most. And Jesse addresses her extremely angry looking parents now in the audience and Clayton apologizes to them once again and says he's made a lot of mistakes. He's learning to be a better person, blah, blah, blah. This is a lot of the same. A lot of sword falling. Jesse asks Clayton if he is indeed haunted by having sent Rachel home. And he just says he followed his heart and he doesn't really answer this. Suggesting he is not haunted. He'll be haunted. I actually find his shift after Susie left, his shift towards Rachel a little off-putting. Yeah. Only pizza ice cream now. Now, Rachel says, you told me I was the first person you said I love you to in six years. Did you say that to me to sleep with me? That was a great question. It was a great question. Because I think it has a lot of relevance. Okay. So do you think then... That his attraction to Rachel was purely carnal. Yes. He wanted so, to sleep with her. No, I, I don't mean yes to that. I said yes, like like they say in Spanish. Like, bueno, you know, I'm going to tell you what I think. <laughs> okay. That's the thing they do. Okay. I know very little Spanish. I know. They're like, they're like, ask the question like, bueno. And then they say the answer. Okay. So I'm saying yes, mm-hmm. no. I think that Clayton is very physically driven. There's two, two faults he has. And if I could speak directly to you, Clayton, I'm telling you this, because I know I've been there. He is physically driven Mm -hmm. and it confuses his emotions. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, this is not like he's, you know, reinventing the wheel. Many guys have this issue. Many. Yes. If not a majority of guys. It's one of the reasons why you say men under 36 are not yet adults. That's right. Because they haven't been through this experience. They're like, oh, I see. I'm driven by my penis. Yeah. That's a problem. (laughs) I'm driven by my penis. Yeah. My penis. My penis driven. (laughs) So he is very physically driven and he's also very, he's a control freak. He doesn't want the girl to leave him. Mm -hmm. He's very upset by that. Yeah. He needs that back. He needs to rectify that. So the combination of being very physically driven and wanting the girl who got away is a very bad and unhealthy combination that is not uncommon amongst young men Mm -hmm. and needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And I think that he was physically driven by Rachel. Yes. And I think her question has a lot of relevance because it's a very bold question to ask on basically live TV. Yes. Very bold and very strange. Like people are not used to that question, but that's sort of a question that you're like, why isn't everyone asking that? Mm-hmm. But no one ever asked that. Yeah. But she asked that. Why did yeah. she ask that? Because she felt it. And who knows any, who knows better than the relationship between her and Clayton yes. than her? Uh-huh. She asked that for a good reason. Yeah. Because I do believe that Clayton was to some degree physically driven to f- get consummation with her. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that once he did have that consummation, he suddenly was like, eh, I'm good with that. I'm going to go for Susie. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that it was a combination. 
Yeah. It was a combination of, yes, you're right, Rachel. I think there was some element of him pursuing you to get that physical consummation. Mm -hmm. But also there was the other flaw he has of needing the one who got away. Yes. And actually this ties in nicely with what you said last week, which is that he almost out of comfort, out of convenience. Mm -hmm. It's so much easier to just say you love someone and, and have sex with them than it is to have the discomfort. Remember, he's, he's doing what Jesus Christ would do. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> he's following the Bible. But also, like the scene in Team America. Where, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 where, yeah. The, where, the, where the woman... Promise me you'll never like, die and like, I'll have sex you, with you right now. He's like, I will never yeah. die. Amazing. Yeah, Amazing great scene. scene. Yes. But this is what happened. Yep. <laughs> exactly. And I actually think, you know, no one has really spent any time talking about this, but it got, it got me thinking that Clayton, you know, you could argue what happens in the fantasy suite should stay in the fantasy suite. Does all of America and whatever other countries no. watching this show need to know that Gabby and Rachel had sex in the fantasy and suite. By the way, it's by the way, we, we don't know that they had sex. They were intimate. Maybe intimacy involves holding hands while eating strawberries. Mm. No, they had sex. My point is Clayton outed that yeah. in his conversation with Susie on national television. I don't think you should kiss and tell I to don't think two, you should three either. million people. Well, I, I mean, used to be eight, but now probably <laughs> two or three million. <laughs> Anyway, I feel like people aren't talking about that enough. Like, I would be pretty miffed. Like, that's really an you invasion not of privacy. Tell. You should not tell. Yeah. You should just have, like, that Cheshire grin. Like, who knows what happens? <laughs> yeah. The show resumes now. We see B-roll of Clayton watching seagulls. I swear he's aged five years. <laughs> it looks very it's weathered. Like, it's like Rambo 5. <laughs> it's like, where have you been all these years, Rambo? <laughs> Uh, I've been biding my time. He's holding a ring, suggesting he intends to propose. And now Jesse drops off a handwritten letter written by Clayton. Maybe he was writing something after all. Yeah, There's another writing session. <laughs> to, to Susie. And the letter basically professes his love. It says without her, he's nothing. And he'll be waiting for her in the countryside. Sounds like a like a like like an Irish folk song. Folk song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the countryside, <laughs> I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> Ooh, that wasn't good. <laughs> it just took an unexpected turn but there. It should be sadder than that, right? Yeah. I'm thinking of like early one morning. Like, oh, yeah, in yeah. In the countryside, I'll be waiting for you. Wait, waking up. To the morning dew in the countryside, <laughs> I'll be waiting for you. Oh, that was horrible. What accent was that? I don't know. It was sort of not an accent. In the countryside, mm -hmm. Susie arrives and they compliment each other on looking great. Yeah. <laughs> Most important thing. And Clayton here says, from the moment you stepped out, I was incredibly blown away. Mm. Over time, I started to see sides of you that I realized were beyond like anything I could have imagined. The side of you that doesn't want to hang out with me? <laughs> <laughs> it's just you and me here because I don't want anything else. Where's the specificity? None. I'm sorry to be that person. I'm that person every season. But for real, from the moment you stepped out, I was incredibly blown away by what? What about her blew him away? Over time, I start to see sides of you. What were the sides that I realized were beyond like anything I could have imagined? Nothing. What were the things you could Nothing. imagine that she had that were beyond that? Nothing. It's just you and me here because I don't want anything else other than you. She's, and what were the things about you that I wanted? She's super pretty. She's got a decent personality and she doesn't like him. <laughs> it's an amazing combo. <laughs> Powerful. He says he loves her so much. And to prove how serious he is, he pulls out the ring and says, I'm this serious about it. <laughs> I hated this. I'm sorry. If you're going to have a ring, use it for its intended purpose, not as some proof of your seriousness. I did that once. I totally did. Oh, that makes me see you differently. No, it doesn't. I'm judging I told you, you this story before. <laughs> I told you, my, my ex, oh, who we had on the yeah, show. Yeah, but that's because you were actually intending to propose. Oh, I was intending to propose. Yeah. But I also used it as a prop. She said, she basically said at dinner, by the way, this, this woman did become my fiance. This woman. This woman. Margie, who we've had on our podcast. Margie. And my intention was to propose to her at this restaurant. Yeah. And she basically said at dinner, like, I hope you didn't bring me here to propose because I'm not, not, I'm not down with that. 
And then I pulled the ring on. I was like, well, <laughs> well, that's a little different because it was brought up first. You're right. It's not relevant. But I mean, I do think that you shouldn't have done that. But I think to use a ring as some evidence of well, how I used serious it as you guilt. Were. I wanted to guilt. I was like, look at that. Look at you. Shame on you. Yeah. I, was gonna I mean, at least you can you. admit that it was used for guilt. Like, I feel like this was sort of like, just prove how sincere you are. You don't need a prop. Yeah. Like, what's she supposed to say? Is she supposed to be touched by that? Like, when he pulled out the box, she was like, like, what do you say to that? Like, Nothing. oh, okay, yeah, you know what? I do want you to propose. Get down on one knee. I want that ring. Like, there's no, there's let's no, say she did want to get engaged to him. How is that romantic? Nothing. It's all transactional at this point. Yes. The Titanic has sunk. It's yes. at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. Everyone's dead, <laughs> including Leonardo DiCaprio, <laughs> but not Kate Winslet. She's still alive somehow. He says he just wants her to give him the chance. Susie says his letter meant so much. She believes every word and he's an incredible person. There's no doubt their connection and the love she has for him is so real, but... She doesn't feel like she has the love for him he has for her. Mm -hmm. And she's leaving Iceland alone. Interestingly, Clayton asks if there's a chance she could ever get to that point. And it's not over for him until she says it's over. Was this necessary? She just said it's over. Yeah. Like, I think that this is further evidence of how he cannot be left. Well, it's like a Jim Carrey situation. It's like, do I have a chance? She's like, oh, I'd say it's <laughs> one in a million. Yeah. So you're saying I have a chance. Indeed. And so she literally has to say it's over. Yeah. And by the way, she means that. Mm hmm. We'll get to that later. And now we're back in the now. And Jesse, of course, says for the first time in history, the bachelor was rejected on the final day and walked away a single man. Or did he? Hmm. OK, so Clayton now at after the final rose says it was five years of growth packed into two months. He wishes he could have done things differently and did everything just following his heart. He keeps saying that, but he thinks he's a better person today. And we learn that he left Iceland, went back to normal life and then was reached out by someone <laughs> and was shocked. And Jesse's like, the woman you're talking about is here tonight. And mm -hmm. they treat this like a gender reveal for some reason. And turns out it's Susie. She reached back out to Clayton. You notice the crowd reaction when Susie walked out? They weren't into no it. No one is plussed by this. No. This is BS. Oh, you think it's BS? The relationship? Yes. Oh, really? Oh, you didn't? He didn't tell me this last night. This was a business decision. By? Susie. Or both of them. And maybe Clayton, too. Well, I mean, he Susie wants said she waved. She's like, bachelorette or staying with Clayton. What's easier? What's less exposing for me? I don't, I don't. I don't know. That's give. That's a little harsh. I don't think she's that calculated. I can see how you go back to real life. This guy says he sent everyone else home. He only has eyes for her. And you go back to real life and you're like on Bumble. And you're like, oh, man, my options are pretty shitty right now. And... You know, I do think there's probably something better for her out there, but you're not going to find that within days. And I can see how after leaving, you kind of have rose colored glasses okay. for what you shared. I'll, I'll, I, I think you might be right, but my instinct says business decision. OK. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. So Susie says she needed the time apart to know that she needed Clayton in her life. She says she loves him. Turns out he is moving to Virginia to be with her. Mm hmm. They deflect the pressure about Neil Lane in a ring. God, this show, they just never give up. Clayton says there's one more thing he has to do, gets up and leaves. And I thought this was so interesting. Susie says to Jesse, it's not a ring. She knows. Mm -hmm. They have discussed oh, this. Oh, yeah. And she's, by the way, wearing a stiff pant in this relationship. <laughs> have you noticed that? <laughs> it's, a, it's a really, it's a, it's a, it's a, very straight legged. Well, something tells me he's in the doghouse for a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he offers her his final rose and she accepts it and they kiss. Okay. And now we get the announcement for Bachelorette. Jesse says, this was the hardest decision we've ever had to make. Yeah, Jesse, Jesse. It's like in, in all his room. years there. They're like, we don't know who to pick. Jesse, what do you think? <laughs> I was like, well, I got this idea. Okay. So it's announced that it's Gabby and Rachel. Mm. And they will co- uh, whatever. Bachelorette. I don't know how I feel about this. I think it's jumping the shark. And okay. I fear that it's jumping the shark. Yeah, I don't want do it not, to be. Okay, no, but here's the thing. Do you think jumping the shark is such a bad idea given Jumping the, the shark is inherently a bit. That's like saying is getting a terminal illness a bad idea. It's no. <laughs> the terminal illness is what's the beginning of the end. 
Okay, so you- I believe that the jumping of the shark is this, and I believe this signals a very dire warning that this franchise is on its heels. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't like this idea. Wait, but don't you think that it's better than them just sticking to their guns and doing the same thing until they go extinct? Well, tell that to Happy Days when Fonzie jumped the shark. That's it- what probably some people said. They're like, yeah, this is great because we've seen the same thing over and over again, but now he's jumping the shark. This is new. No. It didn't say the shark. That was it. It was over. (laughs) But I I want it to not be over. I want more than anything for this to be a big success. I just fear that this is the death rattle, so to speak. Okay. I hope it's not. Okay. And Jesse Palmer will still be hosting. That's good. He deserves it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, it was a rough season. I'm completely indifferent to Jesse. I'm Palmer. fine. Jesse's fine. He serves his purpose. He serves his purpose totally fine, and he's Canadian, so that you yeah. know, oh, brings him really? up. He's yeah. Canadian. Yeah, I didn't know that. Good for him. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay, so in conclusion, what are your overall thoughts? You don't totally buy the Susie Clayton relationship. Look, I I think, and look, it's it's just this is all business, right? Sometimes it's not. Sometimes they get together, they have babies, and everything's happy ever after. Mm-hmm. That's very rare. Mm-hmm. In this situation, I believe this is business. I believe that Susie just made a business decision. She's letting him sell his apartment and move to Virginia. I don't agree with you. I think that she probably came back home, realized that, oh, that what we had wasn't so bad after all, especially comparatively. And why not give it a go outside of that crazy environment that I mean the the show threw the relationship under the bus for the sake of ratings I agree so they're giving it a go will they last I'll I'll bet you any amount of money that they are done within six months (laughs) okay I'm a little more optimistic I'll I'll give it a year I think what I was missing from this look It wasn't the unhappiest of endings, but what I was missing was what I felt was happiness. There's no passion. There's no happiness. Yeah. Like Clayton didn't look happy. You notice how many push kisses happened? (laughs) Yeah. The push. You push the the mouth away with your kiss. That's not a good sign. I don't know if that can be read into too much. Early stage relationship. It's a PC kiss kiss. with an audience around. Like they're not going to like put their tongues in each other's mouths. You can PC kiss soft and, and linger. You don't have to push away. <laughs> push kiss is not a good good sign. But what I was missing was what I felt was genuine beaming joy from Clayton. He, did he no not blushing. get what he wanted? No. At the was, end, he forced the joy at the end. You could see he was. It was like he was waiting. He was like, "When's my turn to be joyous?" Unless he felt guilty, seeming too joyous because he knew that he would. This is something I considered, and yeah, it's possible. That's really possible. I, I would. I can see myself being a bit like that. Like I feel embarrassed to seem too happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't deserve a happy ending, and therefore, even though I've achieved something of a happy ending, I'm not going to act that happy because I don't deserve to be happy. I, I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> But just looking at what I saw on the surface, did not I did not see passion. Mm-hmm. I did not see excitement. I did not see the, the, the cup brimming over with joy. I did not see blushing. Mm. I did not see any physical suggestions that there was a real like, like I need you in my life, like we're bonded. Like mm-hmm. I don't believe this. And I want to be proven wrong. I Believe me, I'm not going to be like, I told you they sucked. I would love to be proven wrong. I will end there. Okay. All right. We can leave it there. I'm sure a lot of Shandies will agree with you. We're happy with the bachelorette decision. I mean, who wouldn't be happy with that? Yeah, they're great. They're good friends. They, the relationship is very cute. And, mm-hmm. you know, we'll see what happens. It'll and I'm sure they're going to use their friendship against them. Like, that's definitely going to oh, happen. Oh, 100%. There's going to be a guy that they're both into and they're going to pit them against each other. And yeah. it's going to be terrible. Yeah. But yeah. we know this is coming. Yeah. Okay. So... Do you want to first do word watch or do you want to talk about our predictions? Let's do our predictions. Predictions. No, because from night one, this is our thing we do. Oh, yeah. You yeah, always yeah, forget. Yeah, 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 so yeah, we yeah. had predictions on night one. We're going to see who was more right. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to win. I think I'm going to win. <laughs> so, Andy, in your first spot, you had Susie. In second, you had Teddy. In third, Genevieve. And fourth, Rachel. And your wild card was Shanae. <laughs> <laughs> she was wild. For me, my first place was Rachel. Mm. I was steadfast with Rachel the whole no, time. Good. I'm, I'm still distraught good, about I, this. I actually give you more credit than me picking the actual winner. 
Oh, because... Because I think Rachel was the real winner. I mean... Anyway, go on. I, I feel weird telling someone else how they felt about another relationship. Like, yeah. I'm not in it. But to me, I'm holding on tight to the Rachel thing. I, I still no, feel like... Good. I feel good. like he almost turned. Yeah. He became a different person with her. Yep. Anyway, I'll drop it. Yeah. So first, Rachel. Second, Teddy. Third, mm-hmm. Susie. And I wrote, but personally, I think she'll be bachelorette. She has the look. Amazing. <laughs> I mean, you were right also, kind of. <laughs> And fourth, Genevieve, and my wild card was Eliza. Mm. So we, in general, were pretty wrong. I mean, I was pretty damn right about my first place. So I don't know if I'm going to allow you to put me in that category. (laughs) Separating yourself from me? I I mean, you can make a case that I was 100% right, because really, you're not guessing who's coming in first, second, third, fourth. You're guessing who's going to win. You were 100% right. Yeah, I'm going to take that I maintain... That Susie was meant to be destined for Bachelorette. I agree. But he liked her too I much. I agree that I got I got an unfair victory. I don't believe that I deserved it, but I did win. <laughs> Finally, Andy, our word watch. There were zero fingers, mm. and I'm thankful that you picked the word finger because I've had a very, very busy week. Yeah, so thank you. I did it for you. And most of you did guess zero fingers. Almost everybody. Yeah, this was basically yeah, handed to hundreds, you on a silver platter. There were hundreds of zeros. Yeah. And so the winner is even more honored. Yes. I mean, not honored. More lucky. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think there's any honor. Just lucky. Yeah, just lucky. Congratulations to Nicole Marie. You are the happy winner of a... Hello Tushy Bidet. Yes. With our final recap, our final giveaway uh, in nine months, you are just sliding in under the... Yeah. What's the thing that closes in Indiana Jones? Um, a, a, a stone a, a wall, sliding stone wall. Oh, yeah, that yeah. makes no sense. Yeah, yeah, you're sliding under and just in time to get a clean yeah, butt. You grab the hat, like right under the. Yeah. You just grab your hat yes. back. So Nicole Marie, please email us at dearshandy at gmail by this Friday. Wait, what's today? Oh, this will probably come out on Thursday. We'll give you till Monday, <laughs> by Monday at midnight to claim your prize. And that's a wrap for the Shandy Word Watch for that's quite it. some time. That's very sad. It does feel sad. Yeah. That's like the end of a chapter. Mm. Okay, Andy, that's it. That is it. How do you feel? Do you feel rejuvenated by that season? Drained? I feel like um, a break may be needed. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, I think you got to clean the slate yeah. a little bit. And no promises on recapping something else. It's just if there's an overwhelming response, I just want to put that yeah, out there. No, we want to hear what you have to say. It, yeah, and it matters to me that it, like it's strength in numbers. Yeah, just I, tell us I, what I, you we're want. We're not going to recap something that people aren't going to watch. I just we are I'm not doing that monkeys. to myself. We want to dance for you. <laughs> tell us what song we should dance to. <laughs> Okay, Andy, I think then that's a wrap. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Shandies, yeah. for tuning in to all these recaps with us. Yeah, and thank you. And we'll see you in July, maybe sooner with something else. We'll see. I got to I got to from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. You're the best. And you're the reason. You really are. This is not, we're not just saying this. Mm-hmm. And I don't say things I, I just am supposed to say. I know. As everyone knows. <laughs> you're the reason why we keep doing this. Yes. You're great. And, and really just... Can't thank you enough. And I also want to add that, especially these past few months, as things have gotten really busy for us, I can't stress enough. I I don't know how to express this to you guys, but sometimes your comments really make our day. I don't know how, like they do. Sometimes we're having a really hard time going through something really rough in our personal lives. And I don't know if you know the impact your words can have. And sometimes you guys go out of your way to just say something that really touches us and makes us feel so seen. Yeah. And like we have friends who we just haven't met yet in various parts of the world. And it just means a lot. And it so. reaffirms my faith in humanity. Yeah. Personally. <laughs> Shandies reaffirm your faith in they humanity. They do. Because the internet is, is a place of bad Things. Yes. People say a lot of bad things. Yeah. And on, on our comments, it's really just an enormous amount of love. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye. Dear Shandy.